Hello, everyone. I want to say good evening to those in the U.S. and good afternoon or good morning to those people outside. I want to say hello. I will go ahead and take this off. Hopefully, you're having a beautiful day or night wherever you are. But this program, I want to talk about degenerative disc disease. Now, there's many of my videos that we've talked about at this particular topic, but I'm getting so many questions that are coming in that are really asking me a lot of different questions about it. Because it's such a, a, a major epidemic. We are uh, streaming live as uh, people in the chat rooms are coming through now. I want to say hello to my chatters. But what, so what I've done is I uh, brought together one of the most important questions. Uh, today, I want to review some Q&A, some beautiful Q&A about this old degenerative disc disease, this old degenerative problem. And I really think that this will really give you some insight. Uh, this is something that I think that all of us can use. But uh, let's just talk about this picture right here. If you look at that picture right there, that's the old disc degeneration. Disc degeneration basically means that the disc between the vertebrae are coming closer together and it's causing potential wear and tear on the bones or the nerves. And I'm going to show you that more uh, internally as I go through some of the pictures. But what I want to do right now is answer some common questions. These are some very, very common questions. Uh, first one, uh, what causes disc degeneration? Well, degeneration usually is weight bearing. Degeneration is poor stress. Degeneration are things that we do repetitively that causes those discs, particularly if it's the neck or from the lower back, to start the wear and tear. That means for people who are overweight, there's more weight bearing on the lower back, so you're going to have more compression. Uh, for people who have poor posture with their head in a forward posture like this on a computer, uh, picking up the old uh, uh, phone, looking down like this, or your iPad, or reading like this for many hours, or being at a desk, or keeping your arms up elevated, those cumulative trauma disorders will cause excessive stress. The head weighs 12 pounds for every inch we go forward. It's an additional 10 pounds, 2 inches forward, 32 pounds, 3 inches forward. It's 42 pounds. This causes wear and tear on those discs. Uh, so what causes this degenerative problem is stress, and that leads to inflammation. Uh, another common question that comes up is, or is this degeneration inherited? Is it genetic? Well, my answer is yes partially genetic because everything in life is genetic. I mean, you know, we have genes that uh, are, allow our bones and our joints to be formed a certain way. Not every one of our vertebrae are the same. Not every one of the angles of the facet joints are the same. So yes, there are potential genes that they find that may lead to this, but I am saying like there's nothing that's going to cause it 100%. You're generally going to lead yourself to degeneration. The genetic part may help you degenerate quicker, but that's not going to make you degenerate. I hope that makes sense to you. So basically, the discs uh, are composed of uh, annular fibers around the outside and the gel on the inside, which I'll show you in just a few minutes. Uh, so the next question is, um, what is disc-based narrowing? Well, let's see if we can look. We can look right here. Disc-based narrowing basically means that the disc is starting to get thinner. Uh, if we look at this problem, uh, this condition right here, we look at DDD, uh, degenerative disc. You can look at the degenerative disc. You can see that disc degenerates. It gets thinner. Well, that means we're, we're, we're dehydrating the disc. The disc is coming closer together, kind of like a pancake. The purpose of those discs is to hold the vertebrae apart from each other. So you can see as that disc gets thinner, that nerve becomes more affected. And generally, when we start affecting nerves... What do we do? Uh, we start showing that there becomes an issue on the nerve root. If you look here, that nerve root becomes compressed and irritated or inflamed. We call that a subluxation, a compression. We call that, you know, irritation. We can call it inflammation. But the nerve becomes inflamed. We, be, we then start to have pain. So when we start to develop symptoms, what do we do? We run to the pill box. We run to the doctor. We start getting injections. And, and that's not the answer. So I want to really make this program educational so you can prevent these problems from arising to become a little smarter. It's just like nutrition. All our nutrition programs, you're learning how to preserve your body. Well, you still need to learn how to preserve your body because it's extremely important because you don't want these things to happen to you. 
So these types of degenerative problems we cannot afford. Uh, next question, what's the best treatment for degenerative disc disease? Well, the best treatment is preventing it. The second best treatment is that once it happens, once you become symptomatic, it's knowing how to manage it. So if you are having degenerative uh, disc problems, um, how will you know it? Well, that's another question. By x-ray. X-ray is really the only way that you're going to be able to look at the, the height of those discs to see if there's any degeneration. You can't tell or an, a doctor cannot evaluate you from the outside. Even if you have pain and see you have disc degeneration, there's no way to know. You need to uh, look at it through an x-ray. Obviously, an MRI can show, but x-rays are the best because it's bone on bone, and in between the bone is the soft tissue. You're not going to see the integrity of the soft tissue, but you'll see the space. And if that space is much narrowed, uh, then obviously that is degeneration. So uh, chiropractic has been very helpful. Uh, decompression therapy, uh, manual therapy, mechanical therapy to, to decompress and pull the vertebrae apart. Uh, ultrasound is good to reduce inflammation. Hanging on a bar is very good. Inversion therapy is good if you are uh, a candidate for it. Most people are, as long as you don't have seriously high blood pressure or glaucoma or any intraocular pressure. Uh, very good. Anytime you can decompress. There are types of therapies where, you know, someone can grab your legs and pull you apart when you're on the bed. I mean, there's a lot of creative things you can do. You don't have to spend lots of money to get well. You need to spend lots of education to get well. That's why we're here together, to try to help each other, to try to make this a, a real educational type of thing. Um, next question is, what is degenerative spondylosis? Uh, degenerative spondylosis is really arthritic condition. Let's look here. Here's degenerative spondylosis. Well, that's not the one I was trying to show you. Uh, degenerative spondylosis. Uh, here's one right here. Uh, that shows degeneration. Now, generally, when the bones get close together because the discs become thinner, because it becomes dehydrated, uh, those bones can then start going through what we call osteoblastic activity. Osteoblastic activity means the, the body starts adding bone to the area. It starts to become irregular uh, because, obviously, the body is trying to compromise and compensate from the loss of disc. The purpose of the disc is to keep the bones apart. So the body reads it as if there's a problem, so the body starts adding in calcium or osteoblastic activity, and we call that degenerative joint disease. Degenerative joint disease or and spondylosis, degenerative spondylosis is really the same thing. The most common areas that you're going to find this uh, is more common, uh, let's see if I can find one in here, uh, in the lower back. There you go. Look on the bottom there. Look at the L5-S1 disc, the lowest disc, and the second one is the L4-L5 uh, whenever there is severe or chronic disc degeneration, we then start developing osteophytic formation, which is osteophytes, and osteophytes is a regularity of the calcium because of the instability. So that not only happens in the joints of the spine, it happens anywhere. It happens in the hips, happens in the knees, particularly those where there's weight bearing. So going back to the question, um, people say, well, how can I prevent it from getting worse? Uh, you need to make sure you take the weight off. I have a lot of friends that are heavy, and they, even though their blood work may be well, I can promise you their discs are crying. Their joints are crying. They may not even have pain today, but one day they're going to wake up, and they're going to look at it and say, oh my gosh. They're going to say, that's me? Yeah. So I want you to be aware. Question here is, how do you get it hydrated? Well, I'm going to show you something interesting in just a minute. Because a question, that another question that comes up is I heard that stem cell therapy can dehydrate, can hydrate the, the, the disc. I heard that once, that's another question that people are asking me, can your disc become regenerated when they're degenerated? The answer is no. There are doctors on YouTube right now telling you yes. Show it to me. And I'm going to show you something else. Let's see if we can go there right now. I haven't done this, but let's see if we can do it right now. Let me pull this up. I had never done, I never presented it this way, but this is always a first. I'm going to go ahead and take this off, and I'm going to come to my display capture. Oh, boy, there we go. Well, here's an article right here, and this article basically is talks about stem cell therapy. It's about reversing degenerative disc disease. And I believe this was through the Mayo Clinic, American uh, Academy of Pain Medicine. 
I read this somewhere, but here it is, and it's a study. But basically, they state that stem cell transplant, transplant was viable and effective in halting reversing degenerative disc disease in the, in the spine. But they also go on to say that this study right here was in animals. I want to bring you the end of the study. And the end of the study basically summarizes right down here, okay, a hallmark of IVD, intervertebral disc degeneration disease, is its poor self-repair capacity secondary to the loss of intervertebral disc cells. I'm going to get to that in just a second. But what they're saying is, is that because the cells really, you don't have vascularity on anymore. You have no circulation. So when the cells are damaged, they're damaged. So what they're saying here is that when there is treatment because of the further damage, I'm sorry, because when you do treatment to this area, you are causing further damage to the disc, making it more degenerative. Let's see if I can remove this. Uh, one second for me. So getting back to our, our condition here, um, I want you to know that stem cell therapy is not being really done much on humans. It's all animal studies. Now, what that says to us, if there's millions of people out there who have degenerative discs, uh, let's go ahead and look at something else here, okay? If you got degenerative discs that are so thin that now the outside fibers are starting to tear, we then start getting bulging and herniated and ruptured and fragmented discs. These discs are causing pressure. And when I say pressure, it's leading to this degeneration right here. Here's another question that comes up. Uh, what is cervical spondylosis? It's degeneration of the neck affecting the nerve. See that nerve right there? That red nerve right there affects down into the shoulder, into the arm, into the hand, into the chest, between the shoulder blades. And that nerve, when it's compressed, it's going to cause compression and irritation. It's going to affect that area. It's like choking your neck, choking that nerve supply, not allowing the brain energy to get through that nerve. Those cells are not receiving its adequate nerve supply. It's going to become painful. Okay, so that degenerative disc is really important. So going back to stem cell therapy, um, that's just, you think people can afford stem cell therapy around the world? There are people out there who don't even have doctors in their town. They're walking around with degeneration. So where are they going to go to get it fixed? You know, I'm telling you that once things are degenerated, and I was trying to look for a, a, a picture up here to show you a bald tire and a new tire. When something's bald and it's worn away, it's gone. I mean, as we degenerate, we degenerate. You know, we don't regenerate. So the purpose of life and the purpose of these programs that I put out hundreds of valuable, valuable information out to, to YouTube listeners around the world is prevention. Why run to a doctor? Do you think a doctor is a miracle worker? No, I, I call it God, okay? Or you call it or a higher power or, or an innate intelligence or, an, or innate wisdom. You can call it Jesus. You call it whatever you want to call it. It doesn't matter. But there's someone who, that's healing you and controlling us. Now, we can't run to man to fix what they're doing to us. It doesn't work that way. Stop looking for hospital answers. Stop looking for doctor's answers. Doctors and hospitals hurt a lot of people. I'm not knocking doctors, but I'm saying that drugs are dangerous. So why fiddle with drugs? Take care of your body. All right, very important. All right, let's move on to a few other questions. Lumbar spondylosis. Lumbar spondylosis is the same thing as cervical spondylosis. But uh, obviously, lumbar spondylosis, as we just showed you, is degeneration uh, occurring in the lower back, affecting the nerve. Now, that can affect the sciatic nerve. And that sciatic nerve goes underneath the buttocks down the legs, burning, tingling, numbness down the leg. I don't have a picture up here, but I want you to understand it. Question that people ask me, another one. Uh, can you die? Now, this is no, this is no joke. I'm not making these, these questions up. These are real questions that people ask me. Uh, can you die from disc degeneration? The answer is no. You can, drive, you can die from stress if you let it get to you but you're not going to die from disc degeneration. Someone talks about bone broth. Uh, bone broth, uh, yes, can help discs, uh, but it's not going to regenerate it. It may sustain it. Bone broth is good for cartilage. It's good for, because, you know, the, the disc is composed of cartilage, mainly water. So the best thing I can tell people to do is, you know, hydrate, exercise. You know, when we move around like this, what are we doing? We're, sh we're using the mechanism of the disc. We're just kind of pumping the disc. As we pump it, the osmosis or diffusion 
the nutrients that get into the disc can sustain it. Uh, in younger people, discs can repair. Uh, herniations can go away. I've seen it. Bulging discs can subside. But as we get older, we don't have as much, uh, let me say, life as when it's younger. And that goes with anything. Uh, another question, can osteo, uh, can, can degenerative disc disease lead to osteoarthritis and can osteoarthritis cripple you? The answer is yes. Osteoarthritis, as we go back to this picture again, that's osteoarthritis down on the bottom there. Okay, you see that? That's osteoarthritis, that degeneration. It can cripple you. Now, there was something that came up about uh, can you uh, apply for Social Security with degenerative disc disease? Yes, you can. If the condition is advanced and if you are affecting nerves, you're not going to be able to do what you need to do in life. You're going to have pain and you are disabled. So degenerative disc disease can cause disability. Yes, it can. What does it mean when you get a loss of height? It means that the vertebrae are coming closer together. See there it says disc thinning there? Okay, that's where it says disc thinning. Let's go through some of these other pictures here. Uh, that's, that's degenerative joint disease where it says bone spurs. Those are osteophytes. Below that is a thin disc. Okay, above that's an inflamed joint. Here's degenerative disc disease. You can see the disc can eventually start to crack. Look at the disc above it. It's normal. And below it is a bulging disc. Here's a disc here. You can see osteophytes. You can see a herniation. Just giving you a, a little view here. Here's another degenerative disc. starts to crack. Uh, here is a, another degenerative disc that's affecting a nerve. But, you know, a good analogy is this. What I did today, I picked up a box of, uh, 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 I picked up two dozen donuts. All right? I didn't eat these donuts. I brought them to, to a place today. They loved them. They were like, wow, donuts, fresh donuts. Well, if you ever leave a donut out long enough, the outside will start to flake, will start to crack. That's kind of what happens in a disc. If you have like a, a jelly donut or a cream donut, the gel inside the donut, when those things, when the outside of the donut, which is the outside fibers of the disc called the annular fibrosis, fibrosis, the inside of the donut called the nucleus pulposus, when that gel starts to push out towards the outside of that donut, the outside fibers crack. And then, and then you can get a ruptured disc. That's how disc uh, herniation can occur. Um, let's see any last ones before we wrap it up. We did say it can cause arthritis. It can cause, uh, they say, can a degenerative disc disease cause bone spurs? Yes, it can. Can degenerative disc disease cause compression on nerves? Absolutely, yes. Uh, can degenerative disc disease lead to crepitus, I mean grinding? grinding noises and, and clicking. Yes, it can. Um, can. Is it true you can get multi-level degenerative disc disease? Well, a multi-level uh, degenerative disc disease, let's see if we can find one here. Uh, nope, I don't see one there. Oh, that's, that's multi-level. Multi-level basically is more than one level. So if you have degenerative disc disease, um, more than one level, they call it multi-level. And multi-level degenerative disc disease does not get better. Now, another question that people ask is, do I get smaller? This is a big one. I know you guys uh, and ladies um, are, are curious about this. Is it true that I get smaller as I get older? Yes, you do. One third of the height of your body is composed of those discs. So if a little bit of each disc gets thinner and thinner and it becomes dehydrated, that means the bones get closer together and you become smaller. Yes, you do. Um, so my advice for you is to be aware of your health. Be aware of good posture. Watch your forward head posture. Take the weight off. Exercise. Lots of hydration. Bone broth is good. Okay. Um, you know, get your right nutrients, your, your greens, your, your fruits, your vegetables, your whole grains. Just eat smart. Uh, another, you know, there, there's so many little questions that come up. How do I fix this? Don't try to fix it. Try to maintain and try to prevent it. Okay, if you have a problem now, you know, deal with it, but we got to move forward. Um, is degenerative disc disease a form of arthritis? Not until it starts affecting the joints. Um, can you get degenerative disc disease? Where are the most common areas to get degenerative disc disease? Where there's stress, where there's wear and tear, where there's excessive weakness. What is a dehydrated disc? 
loss of fluid. When you take MRIs and the MRI shows a lot of black in the disc, that's dehydration. Problem is we still don't get enough fluid. What about inversion tables? They're good. If you are a candidate, they're good. Anytime you can decompress, you're good. I have no problem with that. Uh, is there congenital disc disease? Well, there's congenital everything. We talked, the first question we talked about is genetics. There's genetics that play a toll in everything. Okay, meaning that some people have what they call spondylolisthesis. We're not going to get into that here. A slippage of one vertebrae on top of the other. It doesn't mean that you, you, you developed it. It means you were congenitally weak. Maybe it, the body just happened to be that way. Okay, uh, for example, some people develop scoliosis. Okay, scoliosis, you know, a curvature of the spine. Well, you're not really born with scoliosis, but if the joints, the facet joints, these joints right here, if those joints, if the angles of the joints are not really equal on both sides or the angles are a little off balance, it will make you more susceptible for scoliosis, okay, because of this genetic predisposition. So uh, let's just see if I, if I, um, the last anyone's, if you want to throw a question out or two, a uh, chat room, I'll answer that before we make way because this was Q and A's and I think these Q and A's are important. Uh, I'll be more than happy. Uh, can't find help with the cervical rib. Well, the cervical rib is a little different than degenerative disc disease. I can't really go into that here. Um, is yoga good for degenerative disc disease? Yes. It increases core. The best thing you can do for posture is strength and core. Core down in here, stand up, but core down in here helps support here and helps support your back. You need to have a strong core. You still need to have support muscles, okay, your transverse abdominis. How much water should you consume each day throughout the day? Uh, average, uh, you, you can compute it by ounces, average 8 to 12 cups a day, okay? But why not drink more? I mean, you know, put some apple cider vinegar in it. Uh, I think it's good. So... All in all, I, I hope that this kind of gives you an insight, uh, at least somewhat of an insight, about uh, these types of disc problems. You know, these things can lead, as we said, to irritation on the nerve root. And, um, you know, these things you don't want to leave alone. I hope I answered a lot of your questions. I ask any of our new uh, subscribers out there to uh, subscribe to potentially get more of our live feeds, more of our self-help videos. I have many self-help uh, videos all on posture, many, many videos. We have uh, way over a thousand videos on there. But most important, let's continue to you know build these live feeds up, really cover this good information. Uh, again, you can reach me best way on uh, Motivational Doc on Facebook. Go ahead and like the page and uh, leave your comments there, whatever you like to do. But most important, I really hope that these videos are really helping you. They help me because... It really puts things together. Uh, and this is something, uh, degenerative disc disease, um, I'm telling you right now, people, don't think that you're going to be able to fix it. They're doing studies with st stem cell research. If you just tuned in with us, I showed you an article before. They're doing it on animals. You're not an animal. I mean, you may be the species, but you're not an animal. Uh, so um, I really recommend that, you know, uh, you really need to sustain and take care of this. Last question about foam rolling. Uh, someone's asking me, please, about foam rolling. Will foam rolling help a degenerative disc? Does, uh, the best thing for degenerative disc is distraction. If you got compression, you need to distract. Foam rolling potentially may get some mobilization, may work out knots, may work out myofascial trigger points, may increase range of motion. But generally, when we get degeneration, there is instability there is incorrect posture. There's incorrect weight bearing. The majority of people who have lower disc degenerative problems are from twofold. One, overweight. And two, those big bodybuilders, those squatting heavyweight, pressing heavyweight, compressing the load of it. And for those people that spend a lot of time sitting from the excess wear and tear, all right, you need to get up more often, get a lumbar support behind your lower back like this. Okay, these... If I can get the cam here, the pillow right here. There's a pillow, lumbar pillow. Put it behind your lower back and really start changing positions more frequently. I have a bad habit. I get involved in this. And before I know it, I said, wow, it's been an hour. Get up, change positions, bring your head back, stretch a little bit. You know, just 
Just live your life. Be happy. Okay, I hope you uh, enjoyed this. I ask everyone out there to make it a great day, and we'll catch up with you real soon. God bless everyone. Bye-bye now.